Thank you for staying with us and we're in the last part of our conversation with Robert Rabin. Robert, in your workshops, how does it, if someone is coming from that place of authenticity, of being honest and open, how does that then affect the person they're being honest and open with? It, it can affect them in a lot of different ways. The mm -hmm. people who come to the workshop are interested whether they know it or not, they, they're interested in breaking free and learning how to speak the truth. So that is a very distinct audience. In fact, I give the people in the workshop an instruction that when someone else is speaking and they're the audience, their role is to listen appreciatively mm -hmm. because we want to give the speaker what may be the first experience in their life, the experience of people listening to them without criticism or judgment or evaluation, just pure, I'm here to listen appreciatively to what you have to say. So their job is to be open and receive the speaker. The issue is when they leave the workshop and they go back into the world and whatever work they have, and they want to be open, they want to be vulnerable, they want to start taking risks. Mm -hmm. We'd like to think that if they did that, suddenly it was going to hit a responsive cord and everyone was going to just throw their arms open and embrace and hug and, oh my God, thank you, I've been waiting my whole life to tell the truth. But it doesn't happen. Mm. It can press buttons, can't it? It can really press buttons. It can really press buttons because when you start speaking with more confidence, when you are unafraid, of the judgment and the criticism, when you're just there connecting to speak your truth, suddenly there's, there aren't the familiar and customary games. And some people will go, oh, fantastic, now I can, there's an opening for me. As many people will be angry, will be pissed off, will be cynical, will be sarcastic. You, you do this for yourself. You do this for yourself. I would love that every audience I have, whether in a workshop or a talk I give, would just sit there, be wide open, non-judgmental, totally open to everything I have to say, and it's, it's never happened. We have a wonderful audience that's like that. <laughs> well, that would be great, but I Don't like, but I also like the challenge of people yep. yeah. who challenge me because that's where I get a chance to really discover whether or not I am interested in authentic connection, intimacy with self, vulnerability with others. I choose that as a way that I want to be in the world, and it's a way that I want to speak with others. It doesn't matter to me how someone else is, because part of how I talk about confidence in the course is it is a choice that you make. To be a confident speaker, which is to self-bless your truth, and to be willing to tell your truth in front of others is a choice you can make. It doesn't guarantee anything other than that as a self-blessing. Let's then just, in case someone has only just turned this program on, okay, let's just then perhaps summarize for a moment, because real-time speaking is not necessarily about being a public speaker. It's about speaking at any moment, at any time, in any situation in yes. our life from authenticity. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah it is that. Mm. It includes lecturing and mm. workshops, what we tend to think of as public speaking. Yeah. But it is how we, it is the degree of authenticity and confidence and integrity in this sense, whole, integral, whole. Because one of the issues for people in the courses is the way when they were younger, they were often criticized or judged or rejected for their creative self-expression. They take a little part of their creativity and they put it away because I don't want to bring this out. That hurt. I just got criticized. I got publicly shamed. I got embarrassed in school. Whatever may have happened, and it happens to everyone. So they take a little bit of their creative self-expression and they put it away in what Jung might call the shadow bag. They disconnect from it. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we do is say, you've got to choose confidence. You've got to choose to restore the validity and the value of your truth, your creative and expressive power. That's a choice you can make and you have to do it. But when they do that, of course, it brings up all of this old fear of the wound that they experienced before. So I really focus in on it's a choice, it's a choice, it's a choice. Nothing is in the way you can do that. Mm -hmm. 
so it's really important for people to realize that public speaking is how you move in and through life and it's how you speak with anyone other than yourself the same principles are there whether it's one-on-one -on -one, whether it's you're talking to 50 people or 10,000 people authentic connection you've got to tell the truth you've got to connect with people you've got to be willing to be seen before you give your message and we're so used to giving information instead of giving ourselves except what's true is we're always scanning the person to see whether or not they're believable as a person before we're willing to listen to the information so we've got to get put the information aside and realize that communication is fundamentally a relationship of authenticity and that's what we have to decide to do regardless of what other people are doing well, as you were saying that, you mentioned the being seen. Um, some viewers may know, because I've mentioned it once or twice in, in previous shows, that I'm also a trainer, and I work mm -hmm. as a team development trainer, etc. And one of the things that I've often said is, from the moment we're born, we're on show. Yeah. I mean, you and yeah. I at the moment, people are watching us on TV, and they go, OK, so you two are being seen, but I'm not. I'm sitting here in my lounge room. Yeah. But we're always being seen yes. when we're out, around yeah. at least one other person. Absolutely. Always. One of the most difficult exercises I ask people to do in the workshop is mm -hmm. they come in front of other people. You don't say anything. Mm -hmm. You just look person to person slowly. You make connection. And you simply see them and you let them see you. Mm -hmm. That's the most difficult because what people want to do is make a joke. They want to say something. They want to turn away. They want to in some way say, look at anything other than just me and I don't want to just see you because in the seeing and being seen is where intimacy and vulnerability are and even though we crave that mm -hmm. we're at the same time terrified of it because it triggers all of the insecurities we have about our value and our validity you know, of our own point of view and our own truth so just that see and be seen nothing else nothing in between just this, this connection. And I do this with companies. Mm -hmm. I have them do whether it's sales people, it doesn't matter. You've got to be willing to make that kind of connection, to see the other person, have them see you before any authentic communication can happen. So you also take this work into companies? Do yes, businesses? absolutely. I yep. do it with private people who organize mm -hmm. groups of their friends or colleagues, multi level marketing people. I work a lot with authors, businesses, companies, I've worked with politicians, authors, everyone. You've worked with politicians? There was a Minister of Parliament from Western Australia who took one of my workshops in Perth from the Green Party. Mm -hmm. It's quite nice. And so, because everyone is looking, I think, for both a better way to speak, and they understand the importance of it. But the way that I do it also is that they want to break out of the fears that they have about being criticized or judged. I want to go back to the politicians bit. <laughs> on, I mean, it's been a week and a bit since our, our yes, federal election. Yes, I'm aware of that. Yes, because we're now I didn't part get of... involved because <laughs> it's not yet my country, but okay. carry we, on. We haven't, we haven't <laughs> stamped your official Yes, no, I'm, but I did take note, yes. <laughs> That's one of the big things, for example, people who are in the political field, car salespeople, we have a perception yes. that they do not speak the truth. Yeah. 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 It may be true. <laughs> it may be true. There's, what I work with people on, and I, I don't care from where they come, what industry they come from, I teach what I teach. Mm -hmm. And it feels important for me that you tell the truth of who you are. If you're not, then you, you, you should go to the sidelines because I think it's really important for people to do that. It's in terms of their ability to be effective in the world, it's important. In terms of their ability to create and sustain relationships, it's important. But mostly, you got to do it for the sake of your soul you got to start telling the truth. I don't want that job. I don't want to be in this relationship. This is what I think. I don't like that. And until we can get comfortable and trusting in the simple truth of our life, we're going to be creating discord and disharmony within ourselves and in our relationships and at work. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, obviously, in doing your, your workshops may possibly end up 
totally changing careers. There is a fellow who came uh, six months ago who was a manager at a mental health facility. He was very quiet. He gave his talks, but very quiet, very indrawn, as, as if he were in deep process. And on the second day, he got up and he gave a very short talk, and he said, I quit. Mm. I hate my job. I'm not going to do it. I'm going in on Monday, and I'm quitting. And he sat down. I said, that was a very good talk. <laughs> <laughs> straight into the point. And straight into the point. So yeah. it is because, because we're looking for the power and the believability in our speaking. And that is not about stagecraft. Yeah. It's not about eye contact and making the right gesture and how to stand. It's something much more profound than that. Mm. You know, intimacy with self. What is your truth? Yeah. And then vulnerability with others. And then show it to others. And if we're willing to live like that, first of all, we become world-class speakers, but also we really liberate and restore into our life the expressive and creative power that I think is our natural state of being that we have through the different kinds of wounds that we've all sustained, put away and disconnected from. So it's a restoration of the natural state of being creative and expressive and being unafraid of that in life. Mm. So much in there. As we now come to the completion of the program, would you like to have, I sometimes ask this, have a look at that camera, and what would you say to viewers out there? Don't be afraid of what moves within you. There is a French novelist named Emile Zola who wrote, if you ask me why I came to this earth, I will tell you. I came to live out loud. And I think that living out loud, giving full freedom to our creative and expressive power is our nature, it is what we seek, it is what we want, it will do you no harm, it will liberate you and liberate others, do it. Robert, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'll see you for the hundred and second. You will indeed installment on a commercial TV. Oh, fantastic! Station. Yep. <laughs> yes, that would be great. <laughs> we'll actually get paid to do this. Any sponsors out there? <laughs> we need sponsors to go to the next level. Just give me a call. Speaking, give a call. You know the website www.conversationswithrobin.com. If you go into guests and topics, you'll see some information there on Robert and a link to his website. And it does. It sounds like a fantastic workshop that thank you do. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Robert. Yeah, thank you very much for My being pleasure. with us again. My pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> see you next time and take care.